Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Captain America the First Avenger. Now before I begin my review, I want to give a shout out to a username Blazin Rants, or well, her new username is Blazin Rants at Commentaries. Not only do I think she's a really cool person, but I feel her videos are pretty good in the sense of she puts effort not only being informative, but also being entertaining as well. I'll provide a link to her channel in the description. Now that said, let's talk about the film, shall we? So the story starts off at modern times where they see someone with a shield frozen in ice. We then flash back to World War II in Norway where we are introduced to a Nazi officer as well as the commander of the Nazi's research division known as Hydra, Johann Schmidt, played by Hugo Weaving, who finds a Tesseract which possesses untold power and he eventually harnesses energy to try and, you guessed it, take over the world. We are then introduced to Steven Rogers, played by Chris Evans, who is trying to fight for his country, but his health issues prevent him from getting into the army. Eventually, Steve is finally accepted thanks to Dr. Abraham Erskine, played by Stanley Tucci, who recruits him to be part of the super soldier experiment, and later that night, he reveals to Steve that Johan was given an imperfect version of the procedure and received permanent side effects as a result. Eventually, Steve is given the super soldier serum, however, it was short-lived as Erskine is killed by one of Hydra's agents, and when the U.S. Senators chooses to dress up Steve in a colorful costume as Captain America, basically becoming America propaganda or the poster boy to promote the war on America's behalf. As the film progresses, Steve eventually enters the war, where he rescues Bucky when he found out his squad was MIA, and Johan reveals his permanent side effect, which is he has a red skull like that, hence his no name, the Red Skull. Now we're to question, how did Captain America end up frozen in the first place, and how could he stop Hydra, and more importantly, the Red Skull? That's all the plot I mentioned, so now it's time for me to say what I liked about Captain America the First Avenger, what I did not like about Captain America the First Avenger, some trivia in my overall opinion on the film. Okay, so what did I like about Captain America the First Avenger? The acting's overall pretty good. Chris Evans had felt he gave weight in how he doesn't want to kill anyone, and he just wants to fight for his country, even to where during training he is willing to sacrifice himself for his comrades, which is very admirable. Once the NFL demonstrated that he's a good guy, is when he is talking to Bucky Barnes during the fair, as the next morning he had to leave for England. Just the way he played off with Sebastian Stan and how the scene was directed did feel like not only how a pair of friends wouldn't interact, but it also shows just how passionate he was to enter the war to fight for his country. Lastly, I felt he had good chemistry with Haley Atwell and Stanley Tucci early in the film. Hugo Weaving, I think, was excellent, and he arguably stole the show's Johann Schmidt, aka the Red Skull. I felt this casting was perfect because to get the obvious out of the way, I thought he pulled off a German accent pretty well, and I felt he made the character naturally intimidating in his line delivery and facial expressions. While I will mention how the character was written later, Hugo Weaving definitely showed how ambitious Johan was to not only weaponize the Tesseract, but also to use it to destroy slash conquer the world. Lastly with the acting, I have to give praise to Dominic Cooper as Howard Stark, as I could totally understand why in Iron Man 2 Nick Fury said that Tony was just like his father, because Dominic Cooper absolutely nailed the showmanship and the businessman. The obvious example when it comes to the showman side is when he's demonstrating the future car he is making, and even when the test is a failure, he kept his cool and remained charismatic. On top of that, I felt he worked well with Haley Atwell and Chris Evans, specifically the scene when Captain America first picks up his shield, which is a prototype made of vibranium, and Agent Carter tests it out by firing three rounds at the shield, just his facial reactions, you could tell what he was feeling and thinking. Of course, there are other people to bring up, like Stanley Tucci as Dr. Abraham Erskine, Tommy Lee Jones as Colonel Chester Phillips, Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter, and Sebastian Stan as Sergeant James Bucky Barnes, but aside from saying they are overall fine, I don't have a lot left to say about the rest of the acting. The score by Alan Silvestri is very well done, giving the film an all-American feel, especially with the brass and string instruments, but I think the best example being the score called Captain America, which you can hear it when you see Steve Rogers for the first time after he's given the super soldier serum, as well as when he, Bucky, and nearly everyone who was captured by Hydra were walking back to the camp after Steve rescued them. I also felt the soundtrack, specifically the original song Star Spangled Man, which is played while Steve was the U.S. poster boy to join the war, even though I don't have a lot to say about it, I will say it felt appropriate in the sense of it would be something you would hear from the 1940s and it was actually pretty well sung. The visual effects are pretty good with one I think still holds up is making Chris Evans smaller when he's playing Steve Rogers prior to being Captain America. Just the method they did in accomplishing it is very interesting, which I'll get into later. 
I even like the camera tricks they use, such as whenever Captain America and Bucky were on screen together, they make Captain America look taller, and yet in real life, Chris Evans and Sebastian Stan were about the same height. When it comes to the green screen, I figured they would have to use that so they could have the characters be in the 1940s, since there really isn't a lot of options to really do that, and for what it is, I don't have much to add other than I think it looks fine. The production value is very strong, which for a movie with a $140 million budget, you would come to expect. I felt the makeup was very good. One example is when Johan takes off his mask to reveal his true face, and he becomes the Red Skull, because they actually partly made a pull away mask of Hugo Weaving's face. I say partly because in the audio commentary by the director, cinematographer, and editor, the beginning of that scene was CG, and when they cut away, that is where they had Hugo pull off an actual pull away mask. Plus, the Red Skull has never looked better because the mask was very convincing and looking like, well, an actual skull. But they managed to accomplish that without making it too grotesque. Furthermore, I feel a lot of the props, mostly Captain America's famous shield, were very believable. And when he hit someone with it, it actually sounds like they're getting hit by something made of metal. The sets, while I don't have a lot to say about it, were great in the sense of it looks like they actually try to make places feel realistic by comic book standards. Like the underground bunker where Captain America gets a shield does look and feel like how an underground bunker would look back then. Lastly, with the costume design, it was very well done. I liked both the original design for Captain America's suit and the redesign they gave to it, because with the redesign, it does look like it's actually armored, and not just red, white, and blue spandex, which was the original costume he had when he was used as propaganda that was a nod and really was the only way they could show it. The action scenes are fun to watch and how they are paced and shot. One example on how I thought it was paced pretty well was when Captain America was infiltrating a factory run by Hydra while trying to avoid being spotted because it did a good job at being suspenseful with how it was lit and shot. I'll also add the final fight between the Red Skull and Captain America was done fairly well because of the scale of it in that at first it's like an aerial fight where Captain America is obviously trying to stop it from bombing the US as well as the camera angles they used, like with the plane is descending and they are duking it out on the ceiling, was edited very well and it had some decent choreography. I really don't have much more to say about the action scenes other than, for what it is, they were pretty good. With the directing, it's an interesting story because, like with Thor, I was worried how it was going to turn out, but for different reasons. With Thor, what worried me was how they're going to make an actual god relatable, whereas with Captain America the First Avenger, what worried me the most was the directing choice of Joe Johnson because at the time this movie was being released in theaters, I was thinking, oh lord, the guy who made Jurassic Park 3? That's not good. And mind you, this was before I knew he made period adventure films like The Rocketeer. Much to my surprise, it was done rather well. The humor I felt worked pretty well, especially whenever they have Colonel Phillips mention how small Steve Roger is prior to Steve taking the super soldier serum because the timing was great. And in at least one scene, it didn't even require any dialogue, which I think could be attributed to the directing of that scene. I also felt he did build up well, specifically with how they didn't show Red Skull's true face. First, you saw CG blood on the Hydra badge of Johann Schmidt. Then, while he was having a painting of him done, he was kept in the shadows. And then, a little over an hour into the film, then we finally get the big reveal. And by doing that, it helped build anticipation for the reveal of the Red Skull. Furthermore, I felt the closing credits were done with Tate showing the numerous famous American propaganda figures from World War II, most notably Uncle Sam and Rosie the Riveter. Lastly, I felt Joe Johnston really captured the 1940s feel, with not just the dialogue, specifically some of the minor characters' interaction with female characters, but also with how the media would have been like, especially with the scenes when Steve Rogers was being a propaganda figure with how it was handled. I was surprised that the directing was pretty good and actually worked, with what this film was trying to accomplish, and what it was trying to be, which is a fun period action-adventure superhero film. Lastly, the overall story also surprised me, because back in 2011, I was thinking it was going to be some good old American propaganda, since, from what I understand of the comics, and you could correct me on this, but he started out as just that, seeing as Captain America was made during World War II, and he even decked Adolf Hitler. And even the film seems to acknowledge it when Steve Rogers was a poster boy, but what I got at the end of the day was a fun adventure film, and I feel, as a standalone film, it was a decent origin story. It may not do anything truly original in the sense of it doesn't have any real shocking twist, and when you really break it down, it's rather straightforward, 
but that's okay because it was still an extremely entertaining ride, and it felt like it knew what it was, and it wasn't trying to be anything that it wasn't. I will say, unlike Thor, I've bought Steve Rogers and Peggy Carter's a couple more because they had more screen time together, and we get to see their relationship develop as the film progresses. Plus, I felt Chris Evans and Hayley Atwell had better chemistry because they had more material to work with. It's just the overall story, like with the directing, surprised me because back in 2011, I was worried it was going to be some good old American propaganda, but what I got in the end was an old-fashioned fun popcorn film. Now for some of the things I did not like about Captain America the First Avenger. Well, I have two complaints. One is a nitpick, and the other I feel is a little more serious, but neither really took me out of the movie. My nitpick is that one scene I noticed one minor Nazi character seemed to have dropped his German accent when Johann Schmidt was showing them the progress of the work, and then Johann disintegrated him and the other two people he was with. This is a nitpick because it only happens in one scene, really. My second complaint is while I felt Hugo Weaving was excellent as the Red Skull, it feels like a case where the performance outshines what's written on screen. It's just another takeover slash destroy the world villain motivation, which has been done a million times and really doesn't make him stand out as much as some of the villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Don't get me wrong, it didn't completely derail the film for me, but it was something I did notice. Now for some trivia. Captain America made his comic debut in March of 1941, where he was created by Jack Kirby and Joe Simon. According to the trivia page on IMDb, apparently Chris Evans declined the role three times. Not because he didn't like the character or disliked for the role, but because he feared of the effect of the sudden increase of fame would be on his personal life, and it was Robert Downey Jr. who convinced him to take the part and thus get the frame to sign on any role, and the director and producers convinced him to take the role. Some of the cast took inspiration from other people and or media for their performances. Haley Atwell was inspired by Ginger Rogers. Hugo Weaving based his accent off German filmmaker Werner Herzog. And Austrian actor Klaus Maria Brander, I hope I pronounced his name right. Lastly, to prepare for the role of Bucky, Sebastian Stan saw many World War II movies and or documentaries, with the main inspiration being the 2001 miniseries Band of Brothers. The director of The Incredible Hulk, Louis Leterrier, reviewed some of the concept art of the film and was impressed enough that he offered his services, but he was turned down. There were other people that were in the talks of playing Captain America, including Will Smith, Sam Worthington, Garrett Hetland, Channing Tatum, Kellen Lutz, Dane Cook, and even Ryan Philippe either carried out auditions or were on the shortlist, but as we all know, the part went to Chris Evans. Also, apparently, Rosamund Pike was screen tested for the part of Peggy Carter. This was the final film Paramount produced with Marvel Studios, as well as the last Marvel film distributed by Paramount since Disney bought the rights. It was rumored that Edgar Wright has secretly rewritten the film, but he has publicly denied it. The director of the film is Joe Johnston, who prior to being a director, worked in the visual slash art field for a number of iconic films, including the original Star Wars trilogy, as well as Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Temple of Doom. As for his directing work, he also did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Jumanji, The Page Master, The Rocketeer, and yes, he's even directed the 2010 remake of The Wolfman and Jurassic Park 3. They picked Joel Johnston as the director for his previous work in period films, the most notable examples being the aforementioned The Rocketeer and October Sky, but prior to that, John Favreau was originally chosen. Supposedly, he was going to make it a buddy comedy, but he chose to direct Iron Man instead. The composer for the film is Alan Silvestri, who did the score for a lot of Robert Zemeckis films, including the Back to the Future trilogy, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Castaway, Forrest Gump, where he was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Score, and Flight. He also did the score for the first two Predator films, The Abyss, Lilo and Stitch, and he would even do the score for The Avengers. The Captain America suit was mostly made of nylon with some canvas stuff the military would use to make straps, and they wanted to give it a Kevlar weave-like feel, and his helmet is based on a paratrooper's helmet. They made like six different sizes and at least three different shields were used in the film. One was actually metallic and heavy whenever they were doing a close-up like when he's blocking, one made of rubber when he's hitting people with it, and one that was magnetic when he has to put it on his back. And in some scenes, they didn't use any shield at all and made it from CG. To make Chris Evans look thin, they filmed scenes of Chris Evans with the cast, then they filmed scenes with a body double with tracking markers on his face, then they filmed him behind a green screen alone, 
and they even filmed scenes with everyone except Chris Evans. The effect was done by a company called Lola. The prosthetic to make the Red Skull's face is made of silicone, and they took out his nose in post-production. If you watch the behind-the-scenes extra in the Blu-ray release of Captain America the First Avenger, Joe Simon said the inspiration for the Red Skull is while he was having a hot fudge sundae with a cherry on top. According to the audio commentary by director Joe Johnston, cinematographer Shelley Johnson, and one of the film editors, Jeffrey Ford, apparently the first shot you see of the Red Skull's car was not only done on a green screen, but Johnston said the car was completely CG as well. They had like 115 sets, with Joe Johnston's favorite set was the lab where Steve gets the Super Soldier Serum. The pod where Steve is given the Super Soldier Serum, Joe Johnston said it wasn't based on anything, and they wanted it to be like a space launch where it's high-tech, but not where it would be torture like in the form of the Iron Maiden, or like what happened to Wolverine in X-Men 2 when they flash back to how he got his adamantium skeleton. When they had the chase scene between Steve Rogers and a Hydra agent, Chris Evans actually did his own running because when they tried doubling, they didn't have the same dynamic as he did while running. The song Star Spangled Man was actually written by Alan Menken, who you might know for writing songs for many Disney films, including a number of Disney films from the Disney Renaissance, including The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and even Hercules. Plus, he has done work on other Disney films, including Enchanted and Tangled. Some of the other roles that cast it includes Chris Evans, who this wasn't the only Marvel character he played, as he also played Johnny Storm, a.k.a. the Human Torch, from the 2005 film adaptation of The Fantastic Four and its 2007 sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer, Casey Jones from TMNT, Lucas Lee from the 2010 film adaptation of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and even Curtis Everett from Snowpiercer. Tommy Lee Jones, who also played Agent K from the Men in Black trilogy. Thaddeus Stevens from Lincoln, where he was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Marshall Samuel Gerald from The Fugitive, where he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Clay Shaw from JFK. And yes, he was even Harvey Dent, also known as Two-Face from Batman Forever. Lastly, we have Hugo Weaving, who also played Agent Smith from The Matrix trilogy. Elrond from the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings and Hobbit trilogy, Megatron from the first three Michael Bay Transformers films, and he was even V from the 2006 film adaptation of V for Vendetta. Overall, as far as just the Phase 1 films go, I think Captain America The First Avenger is probably my third favorite film, being only behind the first Iron Man film, and what I'll review next. The acting was fine overall, with major praise going to Chris Evans as Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, Hugo Weaving as Johann Schmidt, also known as the Red Skull, and Dominic Cooper as Howard Stark. The action scenes were still fun. The visual effects and production value were strong. The music by Alan Silvestri was well done, appropriately giving it an all-American feel. The overall story did surprise me because it was a well-done popcorn film, and even if you knew very little or nothing about Captain America, it does bring you up to speed and makes Steve Rogers a likable character. But more importantly, the directing shocked me. Because like I said earlier, when this movie was being released back in 2011, I assumed it was going to be the kiss of death, considering Joe Johnson directed Jurassic Park 3. Thankfully, my fear was not realized, and since I saw The Rocketeer years later, I can safely say he really did do a good job making this not only a superhero film, but also a period action adventure. On the downside though, while I thought Hugo Weaving was great as the Red Skull, I feel his motive is rather cliché. If anyone asks me, do I recommend Captain America The First Avenger? I would say it depends. If you like the Marvel Cinematic Universe up until that point, then you might as well have to see it, because it is the final film before the much highly anticipated Avengers film. If you hated the Marvel Cinematic Universe up until that point, just don't bother with it, because if the previous films didn't win you over, then I seriously doubt this will change your mind. If you would never seen the previous Marvel films, I think you can still follow the story alright, so it's not required to see the previous Phase 1 films to get into the story of Captain America, the first Avenger, as well as even enjoying it. Now, if you're an action-adventure person, then I think it's very much worth a watch, because it was very well put together, and while it may not be original, it was still very entertaining, and it works not just as a popcorn film, but as an origin sword to Captain America. Captain America, the first Avenger surprised me with how well put together it was, and to me is a prime example to try and go into a movie with an open mind and not let your fear get the best of you. It may not have done a lot of things new, but at the same time while watching it, I not only got the feeling that they knew what they were making and wasn't trying to be anything that's not, but I also got the impression that the crew were having fun with it, 
which made it all the more entertaining to watch, and I won't fault a movie for knowing what it is, trying to be a fun popcorn film, and it does it well. To conclude, Captain America the First Avenger is a fun old-fashioned popcorn film that managed to introduce the character of Captain America rather well, and I give it a recommendation, especially if you're a fan of the Marvel films, period films, and action-adventure films. This was a solidly fun film all around. I give Captain America The First Avenger 3 stars out of 4 and an 8 out of 10. So that's my review of Captain America The First Avenger. If you want to express your own opinion on the film, you are more than welcome to, but I ask you to please be mature about it. Any bashing and or personal attacks on anyone will never be tolerated as it will be removed on the spot and result in a block. And believe me, people, that is the absolute last thing I want to do to anyone. So that concludes my review of Captain America The First Avenger. Hope you have a wonderful day, and not only that, but I hope to see you all next time as I look at the film that currently has the highest grossing opening weekend in U.S. history.